Barbie. No, I haven't either. Pancake, you watch Barbie? I did not. Nope. Mm. You gonna? You care? Do not care. One I don't bit. know that I care either. Like I can't. I, for a while, I was trying to get my daughter to watch. I was like, "Well, I'll watch it," and she, and so far, she hadn't had any interest in it either. I'm like, "Well, it's not. It's not a movie I'm gonna watch." I'm sure I'll watch it on a date at some point, but I'm not gonna sit and on watch it by myself. Yeah. Huh. Like yeah. I have somebody over and yep. watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I. I think I would. I think I would get stoned and watch it just because it has pretty colors. But I have no interest for the storyline nor the actors. You get Again, stoned though. Every movie's gonna have pretty colors in it. Mm. You can watch Oppenheimer. You get high and watch Oppenheimer. No, no, no. Because <laughs> I don't like loud sounds either, and that seems like it would. Well, and Bill said you don't even need IMAX for it because there's so many close-ups. It's, but it's all close-ups. Yeah, yeah. Like the the people there are like, oh, it's a whole different experience on IMAX. Get out of here. Somebody texted me. I thought it was a flex. They were going to see Killers of the Flower Moon in the movie theater. I'm like, wow. That's. Like I'm a, just gonna watch it on Apple. Good luck. Is like it everybody is else it already on Apple? It's been on. I think it was okay. in the theaters. I think they streamed. The same and, time? Yeah, same time. I've really fallen off going to the movies. Oppenheimer was the last movie I saw in theaters. Oh, my God. I don't I know the last time I've been at the theater. I feel like. It killed my interest in film. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like during COVID, like, I, I felt uh, obligated to go because I didn't want the movie theaters to, theaters to close. And I think there was, like, one big movie that came out around COVID time, but I don't remember what it was. God, what was the last movie I went to go see? It wasn't that long ago, but it was... I went to go see... Um, oh, The Creator. The John David Washington movie oh, where was the that? kid is AI. It's good. I mean, I liked it. Yeah. That looked interesting. It's an original... I think it's an original script. And yeah. It's a, it's a, it looked like it cost a lot of money. I don't know how it did uh, because I think the marketing for it was real weird, but I liked it. It was okay, but I mean that was beginning of October. That was the last movie I saw. I feel like, but Oppenheimer made tons of money for IMAX. They had record revenue. Well, that's because of Oppenheimer. Because everybody was that's how the how they hyped it. They're like, you gotta see it in IMAX. It's a whole, but it's just close ups. No, I I know, but I'm just they can they're gonna do that with every IMAX movie. But they all it also has to be movie people want to see. Yeah, Yeah. Christopher Nolan, obviously that helps. People liked it. I didn't. Uh, I think it was incredibly overrated. Hmm. I get into arguments with my buddy all the time. He's just like... Oh, arguments all part. the time on Oppenheimer. Yeah, every time I see him... I'm he's like, trying to bring you over to he's, his he's side. Like, he's like, no, it's a really good movie. I'm like, hey, <laughs> tell me all the things you think that's good about it. I just don't care. You can tell me all those things. I I, I understand it's a really well-made movie. I understand Christopher Nolan what, knows what he's doing. But when I watched it, I said, this wasn't good. <laughs> Isn't it funny the length some people would go to convince you... Mm-hmm. That a movie you both seen right. and have differing opinions on to convince you that you're wrong about that movie. Right. No, you're you just didn't he's get like, it. He's like, no, you're pointing out all these things. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I I picked up on all the themes. I knew what was going on in the movie. The the dialogue always in Christopher Nolan movies gets garbled for me, so that just annoys me. Uh but yeah, it just wasn't a good movie to me. I saw something with my mom and it was like a scary movie. Uh, and it was this year. I just can't remember what it was. I went with my ex, and we took my mom. And I'm, it's driving me nuts. I have to, like, go through all the movies that came out in 2023 to find out what it was. You and your mom went to a movie. Yeah, and we and that's, like, the type. Five Nights at Freddy's? No. Oh. It was I like, that was very good. It was, like, right before Insidious, The Red Door came out, because I remember it was, like, advertised there. Oh. Ugh. It's driving me nuts. Well, Oppenheimer is going to be back in some IMAX theaters this weekend, and I'm pretty sure it's out of Crocker Park this weekend. Maybe I'll sneak away and go see Oppenheimer. Op- Maybe I'll find myself a spare three hours and 45 minutes and go see Oppenheimer. And tack on a half an hour to the runtime of the movie because I got commercials and let's go out to the lobby and get some snacks and all those songs, which I do love. But um, I, it, it can't be any coincidence, by the way, that uh, the Department of Defense in the United States unveiled their super nuke you know, with all of the kind of people's antenna are up because of Oppenheimer. They're paying a little bit more attention to something like that. Absolutely, because what's going on in the Israel-Gaza situation, you're surrounded by nuclear countries. And they're like, hey, I hope this doesn't get out of here. You know, there's still nine countries that have nukes. And so it can't be a coincidence that America goes, hey, everybody, check out this super nuke we have. Ooh. That is, it. you know... 
much bigger than what you might recall from your World War II newsreel footage. It's called a gravity bomb. Ew, I don't like that sound at all. Why is that? A gravity bomb? Sounds like a drink. I don't like the sound of that. Yo, yo, my man, let me get two gravity bombs and a <laughs> uh, shot of Jaeger, please. Chilled. Yeah, gravity bomb. It's called the B-6113 is uh, what they've given. It's got a guided tail kit and will unleash the blast radius the size of two Manhattans. And they don't mean the drink. Do you imagine if they did mean the drink and the blast radius was the size of two Manhattans? Just side by side? It's like the size of a yellow legal pet. <laughs> <laughs> this is our... How much did this cost? It cost us $4 billion. No, the island of Manhattan. The Pentagon is updating their nuclear bomb stockpile. And so this had to be a perfectly timed. They're signaling to the Middle East. Hey, guys, hey, 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 FYI, you know, yeah. We still, Let's not let this get out of we're hand. We're still cooking over here. That's Just, right. You know, I don't know, it's been, you know, 60 years or whatever. It's we ha There's every possibility that what's going on over there is going to become World War III. But the, uh, the new super nuke... It's much smaller. You know, they can pack a hell of a lot more into a much smaller um, situation. 80 years. 80 years, yeah. I mean, you know, you go back to Fat Man and Little little Boy, the ones that they, they dropped in World War II, those were like 9,000-pound bombs. And these aren't even 1,000 pound, pounds. The 360,000 tons of TNT. So there you go. So we have our, I like where they show where all our nukes are, too. I, I don't know. That's, right I mean, it is. <laughs> yeah. They got a flag yeah. Wyoming, <laughs> Montana. No wonder they're wiling out North Dakota. They got uh, everybody in North Dakota who's, who's elected to some kind of office is stepping down for one thing or another. But, uh, yeah, there's nine countries that have nukes. There's 13,000, the global nuclear stockpile, they think, because we don't even have our finger on all of them, they think it's about 13,000 nukes. And any one of those countries, you know, so just in the Israel-Gaza situation alone, you've got Pakistan and India and Israel who are all nuclear powers. And so we come out and we go, yeah, guys, whatever. I mean, we got a, how you guys doing? We got, we got a super nuke. I mean, just to let you guys know. Just to let you know. So um, if you have lamented the fact that the word warhead isn't getting <laughs> used enough, there was a lot of that going on back in Desert Storm. You know, 90% of all relationships are proximity-based. So there was a lot of warhead back there <laughs> in the desert because, um, you know, people are stressed out. A lot of time to kill. I remember what it was now, the movie. What was the movie? The Boogeyman. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. Stephen King. I took yeah, I heard that stunk. It was not great. Okay. <laughs> that, that popped up on Hulu, too. And I said to my daughter, I'm like, you want to watch The Boogeyman? She, like, could, she could deal with it. She goes, Is it? well, no, I wasn't going to show her that. She goes, it's scary? And I go, yeah. And she's like, eh, I don't think so. I go, yeah, I heard it stinks. Yeah, no, it's fine. All right. I want to go see Insidious, though. Those movies are good. Well, and they're done, right? That's the didn't aren't they done making the Insidious movies? Why don't they? Like why? Patrick Wilson directed this one, and he's like, "See ya, I'm Wait, out." Isn't he in another series that's just like Insidious? Mm, I don't know about that. Maybe he is. He's in like so it's like Insidious, and then there's like oh, The Conjuring. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he someone screwed him over on a contract, is what I think. Like they weren't giving him the money that he wanted for like The Conjuring, and he was like, fine, I'll go do another series. Yeah, but he's also in those like Aquaman movies, movies, and I think he's like quietly a really well-paid actor, that Patrick Wilson. He's he, a good-looking dude. He's a zaddy. He's, he is, yeah. he's 50 years old. And yeah. I'm like, got a hot wife? Yeah. He's hot. But those Conjuring movies, boy, they really, and I know they always do, but they really... Um, they got a glow up in the casting there because those real people, the Ed and Lorraine Warren, the real life people, you're like, holy cow. They're ugly. <laughs> we were watching a documentary that involved them. It was about the first, the first, the, the move, the documentary is called The Devil on Trial or something. It looks really cool, but it's actually pretty lame. But it was the first 
a time that a devil possession case was actually tried as a defense in court. And this Ed and Lorraine Warren were part of it. And, of course, they're both snake oil salesmen. I think they're both dead now, too. But, uh, you know, they were like old people. And they make this movie, and it's Patrick Wilson and what's her name? Uh, I don't know. Ah, uh, the, the wife, Farmiga. What's her name? Vera, not Vera Farmiga. Yeah, Vera Farmiga. Um, and then I, I had never seen the real people before. I'm like, wow, look at them. I I that I know everybody gets a glow up in casting, but the dramatizations of those like TV shows just cracks me up because if you're fat, they'll make you skinny. If you're like you have acne all over your face, they'll just make you perfect. I, I was with my mom this morning, and when I dropped her off at home, <laughs> I, 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 there was a bunch of like people in bras in the middle, of, uh, uh, like in a barn, just like having sex, and they were and they were talking about. They're I was like, Mom, what are you watching? What is this? She's like, oh, e uh, sex led me to the ER. <laughs> That's what she watches. Yeah. So it's this couple talking about, oh, we were on vacation, and we were at this auction at this farm, and we snuck off into one of the barns and started having sex, and then I fell onto a pitchfork or something like that. <laughs> I fell onto a pitchfork. You know, something like that. And they, they, took, had, they took roll in the hay too seriously. So they got the real people talking about it, and then they got, like, you know, this super hot model, you know, in her bra and panties. Like, For the um, reenactment? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what am I dramatization actor will look like? He's gonna be suave. Well, yeah, you gotta take. If you're gonna, you know, white guy. If you're gonna adapt me. for movies, if you're gonna adapt a real story, you've got to get actors that can sell tickets. <laughs> so they're like George Clooney as uh, Henry Kissinger. You know? I, I get it, but like these, no one's watching these TLC shows. You are. No, my mom. Your is. mom is. And mm. they don't. I don't think my mom cares that if they if it's a Lizzo sized person, I want a Lizzo sized character. A Lizzo sized person. <laughs> you know, wow, he danced around that one. Don't sugarcoat it. Yeah. You can't, a Lizzo sized person. Well, like if they do a Missy Elliott biopic, they're not going to get like an Alicia mm. Keys sized person. They're going to get a Lizzo, Missy Elliott sized person. Well, what do you do with Adele? She lost a lot of weight. You get, she got famous when she was heavier. I find it funny that when they do the Michael Jackson movie, they're going to get all shades of his skin, but He's been the same size his whole life, so they need to do all sizes of Adele and all sizes of Missy Elliott in their movie. You saw Lizzo dressed, speaking of celebrity Halloween costumes, Lizzo dressed as Tina Turner. I did not see that. Yeah. She just had, like, the poofy wig and, like, a dress. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Alan, are you sure they don't mean gravity bong? No, it's a gravity bomb, not a gravity bong. Smoke like, weed every day. Like, Remember, no, gravity vote yes on two on Tuesday. Okay, you're voting on that, right? Yep. Because that affects you. <laughs> Listen to him. Every day. He's like, yep. Do you know what we're talking about? Are you going to vote on election day? Yeah. He is not. He's just now learning the next Tuesday is election day. November 7th. I remember. Remember, well, no, remember, what? remember November And what's on the ballot? November. What are the big ones on the ballot? Uh, Abortion and pot. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right to, you know. Get rid of it if you don't want it. You know, yeah. Get rid of it and then <laughs> smoke pot. There you go. Well, well, he's really distilled the, uh, he's taken some complex simple, political issues. Yeah. yeah, and he's distilled them down. That's what the people want. I don't that's want why this. I think, that's why I think he could run for public office as the ultimate outsider. He'd go, I don't even vote. <laughs> I but I want you to vote for me. I don't even care if you vote for me. That's the kind of stuff people like. They don't want you to seem too invested. I can't fix anything. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to be so reliable. I just want you guys to know that. Uh -huh. I was too reliable Finally, in one situation. You can only do what you can do. Finally. And I'm only one man. Yep. But listen, I'll do as much as I can. When I can, you'll get my 100%, 50% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and who's do as I say, that? not as I do. Vote for me. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a tough pivot. To be uh, the ultimate outsider who doesn't even vote or participate in the democratic process trying to get people to. I mean, listen, half the people running for office these days don't believe in democracy. And they stay, they're they crowing about how government's broken, but they still want that free health care, boy. Still want that pension. Your George Santoses and your Lauren Boberts. All I got to do is stay in there. All I got to do is get enough of these rubes to get on my side and I got a lifelong pension. That's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. Something to look forward to for you. Dude, I'm starting a band called Tears of Excrement. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, it is. Mary thought that excrement was everything, that uh, bodily fluids.
Not metabolically, and the nerds were calling us, but, you know. Tears of Excrement is great. If there were a band called Tears of Excrement, I'd be playing them on Saturday night. We do a metal show here. Saturday night, me and Corey Roddick and Pat Butler. I just laid out the playlist today. I'm getting it. I'm, I'm tweaking, and I'm laying it all out. Any ev Evanescence? No, Evanescence. Shut up, Bill. Well, that's Pound Kid's favorite metal band. I thought maybe That's why he doesn't them. host two hours to midnight, and I do. But I got plenty of music Pound Cake's going to like. How you know? I got new Immolation. I got new Hirsch Effect. I got new Goat Whore. I got new Spirit Box. I got, uh, what else? Going to play some Sodom. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he likes that. I got it. Agent Orange. I'll say it. Pass Throw that. For that. <laughs> no, that'll be around 1030. Turn it on. It's six minutes long. You'll love it. <laughs> Old German metal. Okay. All right. Well, you say you got it. It's my homage to Gallagher in the 90s. Never turn your back on a man named Sodom. <laughs> and then he smashed a watermelon. Got the whole front row's ponchos all soaked. And they loved it. Anyway. Two hours to midnight is the show. It is Saturday night. It is 120 minutes of nothing but metal. Uh, Take your request. A comment didn't even, they didn't specify, but they just said the vote of sin on the live stream. So I don't know which vote. For pound cake? I don't know if that's for pound cake or for issue two or issue one, but they just said the vote of sin. Well, you're going to vote for sin regardless. Well, they said of sin, sin <laughs> which uh, implies it wouldn't be for you. Yours might be the vote for sin. Ladies and gentlemen, vote for sin. Service industry night, as most people will recall. This is from, uh, here's some of that Sodom for you, Pound Cake. You're going to like this. Boy, that's German. Can you believe it? Boy, there really is. really is some loss in translation, isn't there? Very exciting, though. I'm looking forward to it.